Before I even get started, let me point out that yet another day has passed without Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States, even being accused of sexual assault, sexual impropriety, or even sexual thoughts. Just saying, the Billy Graham rule remains undefeated. And feminists are always outraged, and today they are outraged that another man has implemented the Billy Graham rule, or the Mike Pence rule if you prefer, one Robert Foster of Mississippi, a Republican candidate for the governor of that state. This was published yesterday by Fox News. GOP campaign tells female journalist she can't shadow candidate without male colleague. From the article, a female reporter in Mississippi is accusing a Republican gubernatorial candidate of sexism after he refused her request to shadow him on the campaign trail. Representative Robert Foster of Hernando's campaign reportedly told Larison Campbell of Mississippi Today that her presence might stoke speculation about an affair between the two. Now, is that an entirely unreasonable concern? I mean, bare-knuckle boxing is more civilized than electoral politics in America because you can at least identify the person attacking you and counterattack them with equal force. In electoral politics, you are expected, first of all, to eat shit and like the taste. The press, the public, anybody can say anything they want about you and you're just supposed to grin and bear it. Elections in America have never been polite or even fair or even about past performance or policy. It's pretty much a game of my team versus your team by whatever means, fair or foul. So if Robert Foster is photographed in the company of a woman, not his wife, automatically, the other side says, he's fucking her, he's cheating on his wife, she's fucking him to get the interview, and on and on and on. And let's put just a little bit more stank on it. We have the great misfortune of living in a world where feminists unironically spout off nonsense like hashtag believe all women, regardless of a lack of corroborating evidence or even contradictory evidence. What, other than whatever personal morals any given woman allegedly adheres to, and I say allegedly because morality is simply a patriarchal construct designed to suppress and repress women's intuitive and mystical ways of just knowing things, but, other than alleged morals, what stops a woman from coming back, say, 20 years later when Robert Foster is running for Senate or President and saying, Robert Foster brushed my shoulder with his hand, thereby raping my soul and should be disqualified from whatever office he's running for. Because, remember, hashtag believe all women. So, what's his counter? What's his defense? The answer is, he doesn't get to have one because a woman's word is worth more than a man's under hashtag believe all women. Back to the article. Colton Robeson, Foster's campaign director offered Campbell an opportunity to follow the candidate, but said she would need a male colleague accompanying her, she said in an article in her paper Tuesday. Perception is everything, Campbell quoted Robeson as saying. We are so close to the primary. If trackers were to get a picture and they put a mailer out, we wouldn't have time to dispute it. And that's why we have to be careful. Now, I wouldn't have even made the concession of a male colleague. I would have snatched up a male intern put a camera in his hand, and told Campbell that if she wants to shadow the campaign, that this intern is going to shadow her, with the camera, at all times. And I would tell the intern that if he did his job and kept his eyes open and kept the camera on her at all times, there would be a nice paid job in the governor's office waiting for him at the end. Hey, quid pro quo. If you want the quo, you better give the quid. Back to the article. According to Campbell, the decision ultimately stemmed from her gender. The only reason you think that people will think I'm having an improper relationship with your candidate is because I am a woman, she said she told him. Well, that's right, but not for the reason she thinks. And because we're supposed to hashtag believe all women, and hashtag believe all women has been amply demonstrated as a pitfall of electoral politics, best to just go around the pit entirely and engage with as few women as possible. And Campbell, in her headlong rush to vindicate her feminine prerogative to do whatever the fuck she wants, irrespective of anyone else's rights or interests, ran and wrote a story about, Oh, Robert Foster is being so mean to me because I'm a woman. So, Larison Campbell has amply demonstrated that she is entitled and she will try to blow some stuff up over her hurt feelings. So, it's probably best to keep her on the opposite side of the street and not behind the scenes. Back to the article. 
Campbell reported that Robeson refused her request even after she offered to wear her press badge in plain view at all times, but Robeson insisted that trackers are trying to get any footage that would make the candidate look bad, Campbell said. Both she and her editor agreed that the request was sexist and an unnecessary use of resources given this reporter's experience covering Mississippi politics. Yeah, let's just pretend that the Rosenthal standard for conflicts doesn't exist or that Allie Watkins fucking James Wolfe for information didn't happen. We'll just pretend that a world exists in which no reporter has ever or would ever have sex with a source for information. We'll just all live in that delusion together. Back to the article. Foster defended his decision on Twitter, citing an agreement with his wife to abide by what he called the Billy Graham rule. Before our decision to run, my wife and I made a commitment to follow the Billy Graham rule, which is to avoid any situation that may evoke suspicion or compromise of our marriage, he tweeted. I am sorry Miss Campbell doesn't share these views, but my decision was out of respect of my wife. Oh, now this is interesting. So what's supposed to happen now? Which woman has to eat shit? Mrs. Foster, the loving wife and mother to the candidate's children, or the strong, independent woman journalist, Larison Campbell? Mrs. Foster, her agreement to the Billy Graham rule might be based on possessiveness, because if your game is right, then your woman will be just a little possessive of you when other women are sniffing around, however innocently, and not even because she thinks that he's going to cheat or that he would cheat, but that he has the option. Push comes to shove, he could get another woman. And maybe she's all about that Christian husband-wife joined forever in the eyes of God, blah, blah, blah stuff. Maybe. And then there's also the possibility that she's a ruthless political operator, the power behind the throne, Mrs. Woodrow Wilson, Lady Macbeth, who figures that she and her husband are going to ride this wholesome Christian family values train until the wheels fall off because that's what the people of Mississippi vote for. But domestic bliss notwithstanding, feminists, what's your ruling here? Is Foster supposed to tell his wife to sit down, shut the fuck up, and get woke because it's the current year? Or does Foster tell Miss Campbell, hey, my wife doesn't like randos hanging around me, and she doesn't always get her way, but today, she's getting her way on this one. Anyway, back to the article. During a radio interview, Foster said that he abided by the same rule in his business and that he would rather be called names by the liberal press than to be put in a situation where it could do damage to my marriage or my family. Well, gosh, a man concerned about his marriage and or family. God, I am sitting here literally shaking at all of this sexism and misogyny. Because, as we know, the family is the source of all women's oppression. And Larison Campbell's fellow sob sisters in the corporate media reacted predictably to Robert Foster having the temerity to suggest that a lowly man can deny a woman anything that she wants. Monica Hesse of the Washington Post wrote today, quote, The Billy Graham rule doesn't honor your wife. It demeans her and all women. Yay, another feminist commissar about to speak on behalf of women as a class because reasons. From the Washington Post article, Larison Campbell, a female reporter with Mississippi Today, revealed this week that she had asked to shadow Foster for a day on the campaign trail. Two of her colleagues were already following other contenders, but Foster turned down Campbell's request, unless, that is, she brought along a male colleague. The reason? He obeys the Billy Graham rule, refusing to be alone with any woman other than his wife or, as he put it, avoid any decision that may evoke suspicion or compromise of our marriage. Or, as writer Jeremy White offered, the rule presumes either A, you can't be trusted, or B, women can't be trusted. Everyone invoking that rule should be prepared to answer which is true. Well, dear, your presumptions are a tad bit off. The presumption of the rule is the reality of men in a gynocentric society in which... If a woman, particularly a holy and sainted white woman, accuses a man of any impropriety directed at her sacred white honey hole, then he's in trouble because hashtag me too. Hashtag believe all women. Hashtag why would a woman ever lie about rape? You know, except for all of the cases in which a woman did lie about rape, etc. So the operative presumption of the Billy Graham rule is not that 
women can't be trusted or that men can't be trusted. It is that men and women in general are gynocentric and that if a woman makes some claim that some man caused her distress for whatever reason, she is likely to be believed by the general public over a man who claims that he is innocent of causing her distress. Therefore, the Billy Graham rule. Now, it's no longer just he said, she said. It's they said, she said. Because the reality is, in the eyes of the general public, a woman's word is worth more than a man's. Back to the Washington Post article. The most harmful aspect of the Graham-Pence rule is this. It keeps women out of the room. It says that men can forward their careers via mentoring sessions, golf games, and brainstorming lunches, but women cannot. Are we together, because of this rule, Foster would never employ a female chief of staff, attorney, or accountant, and never visit a female doctor, dentist, or physical therapist, since all of those roles would necessitate occasional alone time. You know, it's funny that Monica Hesse thinks that men forward their careers solely through mentoring golf games and lunches and not by outworking other people. Yes, there are plenty of pikers and idiot sons of the boss at the top of companies, but, for the most part, the boss is the boss because he puts in those 80 to 120 hour work weeks, doesn't see his kids, and pretty much lives at the office. Women like Monica Hesse don't like to talk about that part of getting power, which is working your ass into the ground and being lucky enough for that work to pay off. They're fixated on managing the power once you've got it, which is the client lunches, the golf games, the award dinners, and all of that other bourgeois horseshit. And nothing requires a person to be alone with an attorney, accountant, doctor, dentist, or physical therapist. However, if you aren't alone with your lawyer, you can't claim that the conversation was privileged communication, unless all of you are willing to lie about it. Concluding the Washington Post article, These might be acceptable if dispiriting choices for a private citizen to make in his own life, but a governor making them has a cascading effect for hundreds of thousands of people within his bureaucracy. The Graham Pence rule prevents women from climbing to the top of their careers because the men who have the power to help them get there won't even let them in the room. Well, that's a fucking lie, and guess what? Private citizens don't even get to make that choice in their lives. How do I know this? Because feminists sue to elbow their way into private associations of private citizens, specifically the Rotary Club and the JCs, and a host of other men's organizations on the flimsy premise that the men had power within those organizations and that the women wanted it. Fuck your freedom of association. Women want what you've got, Therefore, you must give it to them, regardless of whether or not doing so puts you in a bad position. And that's what the Billy Graham rule prevents. It keeps someone else, whether it's the woman you are dealing with, or someone else who just wants to watch you burn, from putting you in a bad spot, because there's a witness there to back up your version of events. Now, ideally, it will never be necessary for you to utilize that witness, but it's better to have and not need than to need and not have.